Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again. Um, as I mentioned, we have been doing a series on the goodness of Abba Father. And uh, we're going to be continuing just to look at that and what that means in regard to us. But really, it's appreciating his goodness. Um, so we'll just start off with the prayer. And um, just thank him for his goodness. Uh, Heavenly Father, we bless you. We honor you. We give you praise. We acknowledge that there is no one like you. That you alone are good, Lord. We have no goodness of our own. But we thank you and we thank you, Lord. I thank you for this time. I thank you. I cover this watch in your blood. We cover the airwaves in your blood. May everyone who receives this message be, be blessed, Lord. I remove my flesh and ask Holy Spirit to have your way. Let your will be done. Guide my thoughts. And uh, be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'll just start um, and uh, I'm going to start in the book of Mark because in Mark, we have a very interesting question. This question, I put it here during the series because it's a very important one and it's important for us to establish where goodness comes from uh, and Jesus you know is talking to the disciples the disciples were talking to him the people were and we see here in Mark 10 18 Jesus the, the, the scripture says why do you call me good Jesus answered no one is good except God alone now keep in mind this is Jesus speaking so it says a certain, it, it, it's, it's very powerful. And in Luke 18, 19, again, he says, why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. And this is, of course, different renditions of the same situ circumstance written by the different um, disciples. So, you know, Luke and Mark, but they're recording the exact same thing. And then in Matthew 19, 17, again, we see from Matthew's perspective, and he says, why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Now, there's been an addition to the response here. Again, Jesus is reiterating that there's only one who is good. But he adds something. It says, if you want to enter life, so there's a way to enter life, you keep the commandments. And he's connecting that to goodness. And uh, why that also matters is that the commandments come from God. So God is uh, providing a way for us to access his goodness, to partake in it in order to be able to exist or be with him um, because he cannot be with sin. You know, he cannot be in the environment uh, where... Uh, Well, he could be anywhere, but it's just that if we want to be with him for eternal life, in that life mode, there's only his goodness in operation. So in Psalm 16, 2, it is written, say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. So we can see this uh, the psalmist here is very aware that he has no goodness of his own outside of the relationship with the Lord. And during this time, 
we know that the commandments had been given because they were given by Moses to Moses for the Israelites. So he's saying that apart from you, I have no good thing. So he was aware that the goodness came from the Lord. So let's continue. So in Psalm 16, verse 2, it says, I say to the Lord, oh, this so, is so, so, repeat, 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 I didn't realize. Uh, let's go to Psalm 37, 3. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Um, I, I love different um, versions here. And we have trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastor. So both of them are emphasizing that we must trust that the Lord knows what is good. And therefore, we need to do what he has asked us to do, which is, we saw in the other one, obey the commandments, like put into practice the process of being good. And that way we're able to dwell in the land. Dwell where, wherever we are located in the physical realm and in the spiritual realm, because it's a way where we exist in the presence of God, with God. And when we apply the goodness, what is it saying? We say, and feed on his faithfulness, meaning trust, obey him, trust that what he says is correct. So feed implies that we are eating of it, we are consuming, we are participating. And this one, the second one says, enjoy safe pasture. So there's another benefit. We, are, we get to have a safe protection, you know, a safety. And um, as we know in the word of God, we are referenced as sheep. And so when you have safe pasture, you're, you're completely engulfed or encased in protection, um, safety, not, not fearing your life, not fearing, you know, anything lacking. You, you have every provision. So let's continue. In Psalm 73, 1, it says, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. We have another dimension added here. And with a certainty, this person is acknowledging how good God has been to Israel as a nation. And then it says to those who are pure in heart. And we can also, you know, delve further in this. And, you know, if you know, the person who was called Israel used to be called Jacob. So here we see again that he was good to Jacob. We knew Jacob had lied. We knew, we, we know the story of Jacob. And. God extended his goodness to Jacob in every circumstance. He never, he, 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 re, he remained good to him. And as a result, to his offspring. And we know that this is part of the promise that was given to Abraham. So, and then we see to those who are pure in heart. We know that the Lord, the word tells us those who are pure will see, blessed are the pure at heart, they will see God. So that is 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 uh, allowing the Lord to read your heart, like to to let him into every aspect and to be humble before him. Uh, that's one. Uh, definition and um, we can get deeper into that but we'll just keep going we have a lot to cover 
in Genesis 1.31, it says, God saw that he had made, and it was very good. Saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. So God made. It's emphasizing that, you know, we... Man was created by God. Creation, you know, all the creatures, everything was created by God. The climate, we know when we read the book of Genesis, we saw, we see the creation and how it was made. And what is really powerful about this is God is saying it was very good. He's not just saying good. He's saying it was very good. So what is made of God? What is of God? Remember we saw in the beginning that only God is good. If it's coming from him, it is, he is saying it's very good. And in this form, it was pure. It had no taint. It was very good. Okay. Uh, in Amos 5, uh, 14 to 15. And, and the thing here, I don't want to, uh, what is it? What I'm trying to say is the nature, what he made was good. So humans, he made them and he's happy. He said it was very good. I'm not talking about the character because that is the free will that we were given. And that can uh, taint, as we know, um, because we have to access, we have to do good to dwell in the land. Okay. So um, Amos 5, 14, 15 says, seek good, not evil, that you may live. So here's a verb, an action being given to us that it's something that should be sought out. We need to seek it. If you recall in Genesis, he says that Jesus was, I mean, God was grieved because he had made, because he had made man because of the evil he saw in the heart of man. And it means that man was not seeking goodness. So here, seek good, not evil that you may live, because we know as a consequence, he, he flooded the earth to destroy the evil that was in it. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good. Maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. So, this is important. We must seek good. So actively look to do good, to be good. It's, it is something that is not of us naturally. So in Psalms 119.65, it says, do good to your servant according to your word, Lord. Now, God says, if you do good, God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. If you do his commandment, obey his commandments, you will be applying goodness to your life. So do good to your servant according to your word. Is saying your word, Lord, you said if we do this, we will, we will have life. So this the the psalmist here is putting faith in the word of God is saying what you said Lord I believe because he knows God is not a liar and so he can one hundred percent believe and trust that what God has said in His word is unquestionable. So it's very faith building, you know. Uh, 
it's uh, in Micah 6, 8, it says, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. These are very, very powerful words, actions. To act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. It's not independent of the Lord. That's a false humility. And that is pride because it is an arrogance when you're not with your Lord, with God. So it's great because he says he has shown you, O oh mortal, what is good. Because in the beginning we said that we saw that only God is good. And he has shown us how to be good. What is goodness? What the Lord requires. He requires justice, righteousness. He requires mercy. He extends mercy to us. He expects that we are able to exercise mercy and understand that this is a way of being good because he's the one who has shown us how to do so. To walk humbly with him. To understand that not, no one is good except God. That is to understand that we have no goodness of our own. That every good thing, everything that we do, even if it's a good thought, you know, or it, it's not, it's, a, it's good that we have it, but it doesn't come from us. It comes from knowing the Father and applying his word in our lives. We understand even that whole thing is, is humbling. So it's saying to walk humbly with our God. Understand that we need to yield our will to the will of the Father, to what we read, to act on it without humility, I mean, pride. So... In Genesis, we're going to go back a little bit here because it's important to say the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. We saw the other one was saying remain in the land and have good pasture. In the middle of the garden with the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, again, it's important to see that God made, he's the one who made all kinds of trees. Trees that could nourish us. They were pleasing to the eye and good for food. And we see that there's a tree of life and a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, we're going to just park there and read, you know, what about a good tree? Where are you planted? How are you planted? Regardless of which way you are planted, whether you're aware or not, whether you, you meaning our way of life, our actions means, shows us that we are planted in some thought in some mode of belief, in some set of practices by the way we live. So there is, it is important to be planted correctly. Um, where and how? If we are, if we're, if we're doing where, it should be that we're planted in, okay, in Christ. How should we, we are applying what we have been shown so that we, we make sure we're planted deep, okay? How is, 
there are levels. Okay. So we meaning the goodness of the father is depthless. So you can be planted very deep, have very, very deep roots or have very shallow roots. Now, um, you could be planted in sin. You could be planted in the tree of life. Okay. So make a tree good and its fruit will be good or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad for a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored in him. So we, you know, if you know, we know about a tree, it stores, it stores, it receives the sunlight to make. Uh, to get photosynthesis to receive the food and it gets its water from deep in the soil it gets its nutrients through the roots that come up into the root into the trunk into the vein into all the leaves feeding the entire tree so what is stored deep down in the roots is nutrition the water everything that the tree requires to keep growing strong, straight, tall. However, the you know, we see here that God made all kinds of trees to grow in the ground. So if we take that to you and I, we know that we are, there's there he made men, but there's all kind of men, meaning he made all races, he made all nations, he made men of every language in all the all throughout the earth. Now we are have different customs and things like that, but he's saying, make a tree and its fruit will be good, or make a tree and its fruit will be bad. So there's a degree of uh what should I say? will you you can do what you want um, he made the trees and they were pleasing to the eye and they were good for food now depending on where you're planted what is coming out can only be what has been stored up in your experience stored up in your heart kept marinated so you could have an appearance of I don't know, maybe oh, this person looks like they're safe. This person looks like they're what, what, what. But only what comes out, their actions, their words will really tell you if how this person believes or how they, what their, where their value is because of what comes out, because the heart cannot lie. A good man brings good things out of the good stored in him and an evil Man brings things out of the evil. It's very clear, but these these are very can be very deep. You know, the word of God tells us the heart is deceitful beyond all understanding in Jeremiah. But here we're, we're trying to say that God, we need to remain. It says, but solid food, and let's go to Hebrews 5, 14. Solid food is for the mature who by constant use, this is where we have to remain so that the storage is getting attention. We are letting and allowing, we saw in the previous uh, uh, screen, we had to do justice, to have mercy, and what was the third one? To walk humbly with God. So constant use, training, have trained themselves, this is very important and very powerful, to distinguish good from evil. Why is that important? Because if we don't, the mature solid food, the tree, you know, Yeshua says he's the tree of life. He is the life. If he says, I am the vine, you are the branch. 
if we don't remain in him, oh, I should have put that scripture, but it's in uh, John, I believe in John 14, 15, is talking about the vine and the branches and remaining in him, walking with him. Because We are living in times where if we're not guided by the standard of the Lord, which is what we're looking at by the commandments, by the way written in the word of God, we can call all kinds of things good because the world calls whatever it likes good without any reference to the word of God. And uh, there's a uh, scripture that says, you know, we call good evil and evil good. Bitter sweet and sweet bitter. When we lack discernment, we are not able to distinguish. When we don't have, when we're not walking humbly with the Lord and being fed by the word, remaining in the tree of life so that our hearts are constantly under the radar of the word of God, convicting us, training us, correcting us, rebuking us in righteousness so that we're thoroughly equipped for every good work. Good, again, we have that word. We're able to distinguish, make a difference between what is actually good and what is evil. You know, sometimes you can look at a kid doing naughty things, but the kid or the little one is so cute in appearance that you can just, oh, it's so cute. It's just a kid and not correct it. That's not good. You need to correct because we're training a character of of in that sense that it's okay do what you want you you're still approved it's no problem um it should be about the heart and not the outward appearance so in Matthew 7:17 7, when it says likewise every good tree bears good tree but a bad tree bears bad fruit it's just it's just the truth and the glory the glory of god oh I'm not sure. Okay. Anyway, I think I, that's a good psalm there. Anyway, Psalm 68. Um, not to see which verse it was, but it, I put the glory of God in his goodness to Israel. So, you know, God is glorified. It says the glory of God in his goodness to Israel. When you see the glory of God when we are good because it is who he is. We said, we saw in the beginning, no one is good except God. So it is glory, glorifies God the Father when we are good, when we exercise goodness, when we store good and we allow ourselves to be trained so that we're able to distinguish good from evil it gives glory to God amen so in Matthew 5 15 to 16 it, again it's just elaborating here we're looking at the goodness of God and it's all over the word of God the Bible, it says, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Everyone is impacted. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good, give, good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. I love this because it says it gives light to everyone in the house. So whether they're directly, you know, it's it's your uh, the goodness the goodness stored in our hearts impacts everybody around us. Whether you know they're watching you be good to somebody else, or they've just consistently seen 
that your your good acts, humbling, acting justly, uh, extending mercy, walking humbly before the Lord, just you know, not being arrogant when we're interacting with each other or with others. Um, that they may see your good deeds and glorify who your Father in heaven. This is the goodness of the Father. When we exercise it in our lives, we are glorifying his name here on earth. And we glorify our Father in heaven. We, 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 um, we make him proud. We're like, look, we're extending your glory. So who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good? try you know the evil hates goodness so they might try but the word of here is saying who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good that word eager is also very powerful because what is stored in your heart i'll go back to that you know we can do things out of resistance just because we know it's the good we ought to do Um, which is good because then we're still doing it. But it's better if you're eager to do good because that also, other, you know, people watch, people see. And it's clearly just saying who's going to harm you if you're eager to do good. Um, now, uh, anyway, we can get into that. The word of God is correct. When we When we insist on doing good, of course, when someone is calling evil good and you are saying, no, that actually is not good, they will not be happy. And they might try to harm you, but that's because they are walking in error. So Titus 2.14 says, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what? is good now this is talking about Jesus he gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness it is evil to call evil good it's not a good thing and it is it is it's so he gave himself to redeem us from all wickedness because it could only come from God. You remember the very first slide we looked at. So he exchanged his pure blood to redeem us from the exchange. He took all the wickedness upon himself. We were cleansed, we were purified by his blood. That we could really then be in the presence of Abba and call ourselves his children correctly, you know, and that we're eager to do what is good because we appreciate when you're grateful you knew somebody saved your life you're like oh my gosh I'll do anything just to just show my gratitude this is the constant um, our hearts should be eager always and this is where you know when we're looking at the other one about the branch and what is stored in this is where we, we allow and the word of God to continually heal our hearts from getting, storing evil, storing hurt, storing bitterness. Those things result in evil coming out if we store them. Storing bitterness, storing anger, storing hatred, storing, I mean, this is evil. And when we marinate it and 
Fuel it is going to come out. You know, it says a bitter root can grow up and defile many. Okay, it's just an example. So 1 Corinthians 15, 33, I love this. It says, don't be misled. Do not be. Just, it's so clear. Bad company corrupts good character, period. There's no like, oh, I don't understand this part. Or It's just bad company. Why? We can't assume that we're so we have a goodness of our own or, or some kind of will of our own that is so, so strong that we can maintain a good character if our company, everyone around us, is uh, contrary, has does not have a good character. You know, birds of a feather flock together. You know, why are you going there? What is drawing you there? You must be of like mind. So don't be misled. Ah, okay. <laughs> I I put this, this was a very, I was reading it and it's a very, the whole chapter. I didn't put the whole chapter, but let's just read it. Um, and you'll see why, because it's it's expounding a lot on the goodness. And here we say, because a lot of people say, Okay, let's read it first. It says, therefore, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. So the judgment of God is according to truth. Where do we find that truth in the word of God? Against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness? Um, forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leads you to repentance we saw earlier that god is good to israel and that is a reflects on his glory but let's keep reading do you despise the riches the goodness of god is full of eternal life it's rich of his goodness, of his forbearance, his patience with you and I. His mercy extends, which is why you were saying, asking of us to act justly, to have mercy, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. We're able to be patient with one another. Not knowing that the goodness, when we are aware, we just saw that he redeemed us by his blood. It says, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. This is where the will that the free will he has given us is judged because then our actions, according to our deeds, we are judged. Eternal life to those who by patient, continuous in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. We're seeking life with the Father. Continuous. This is when we're looking at this, the tree of life, looking at being stored, storing goodness, exercising goodness. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, 
unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. So those who, and, and but glory, honor and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. Um, those people who are not even... There are people who are more good than those people who are called saying that we're Christian. What the word of God here is saying that those who have goodness, you know, like written in their, that are a law unto themselves, they are, every one of us is judged based on our actions, our deeds. If we go back to verse six who will render to each one according to his deeds. This is the judgment. And it says, those who show the, in verse 15, I'm going back there, it says, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and being themselves their thoughts, accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men, by Jesus Christ. How? According to the gospel. Of course, we know Paul was writing, but the gospel is the word of God. The secrets of man, because nothing will be hidden on the day of wrath. Doesn't matter where you live, what nationality you are, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're sick or not, the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to the truth in the word of God. So it's saying whether you call yourself a Jew or not, a Christian or not, everybody is going to face the judgment of the Lord based on their actions, written in their hearts and their conscience will, will be judged. Basically, you can't just say, well, I'm a Christian, but you don't care about the condition of your heart. You don't store goodness. You don't, you know, it, 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 well, you will be judged just as much as somebody who is not a Christian. They will be judged. And no one will escape the judgment of the Lord. And all this whole paragraph and the whole chapter is going back to the goodness of God. It says, it, you say, this verse four is very powerful. It says, or oh, do you despise the riches of his goodness? Do you despise that he died for you, for you and I? It says, forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. The more we read the word, the more we eat of the tree of life, we understand how good the goodness of the Lord is and how much we benefit from the word, from applying it to our lives. It leads us to repentance. We walk humbly with the Lord. Amen. Therefore, in uh, in summary here, we're saying, saying Romans eleven twenty two. Therefore, consider the goodness and the severity of God on those who fell, severity, but toward you, goodness. If you continue in His goodness, 
Otherwise, you will also be cut off. 2 Thessalonians 1.11 says, Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So, it's so, well, these are very great summaries. It says that we continue in, again, it's connecting us that all of our goodness is coming from him. If we continue, we will receive, we won't receive any, uh, we, we receive a welcome, a righteous welcome. Anyway, it's so uh, he's saying we always pray for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling. Because we are called to be like him, to fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that comes from him. So we'll, we'll conclude there. And I want to, at this time, pause and ask if there's any questions or comments. Um, if you're not able to, I'm not really sure who's on the line, but if you, uh, you can type if you can't ask, but I'll just pause a moment. And if there's no question or comment, we'll, we'll just continue and um, close out in our prayer. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It was a good exhortation. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. Is that Sister Esther? I'm not sure who that is. No, that's me, you have <laughs> Oh, let me go and see the chat. Okay, there's a chat. Oh, there's five people. Oh, thank you, sister. Amen, amen, amen. It's thought-provoking, amen. So, oops, what did I do? Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, let me go back uh, to the... <laughs> go back to the screen. It jumped around. All right, so... Amen. So everything, it's just really tying and connecting us to the goodness of the Lord and understanding that, oh, what happened here? Uh, oh, psh, sorry. Anyway, we'll, um, we'll just... Amen. So we're going to pray here and, and really understanding that God is the one who is the vine, the branch, the Lord, and we continue to grow. Um, ask, ask him anything and everything because it allows us to grow in his goodness. So let us pray that God, Heavenly Father, we bless you that you have called each one of us and we just bless you for your word. We bless you for your goodness. Your goodness is extends into all who you are, into all your creation, into everything that you aspire and desire of us, your children and those who you have called and your calling to fulfill all the good pleasure of your goodness. Lord, we ask that you continue to help us to work, to be just in all that we do, to understand goodness according to the truth of your word, to love mercy, to exercise mercy with each other, with ev in every situation and circumstance, even with strangers, with everything, because that is who you are. We were strangers to you before we came into your walking with you into your kingdom 
because we walked without, outside of your goodness. Lord, we ask that you will continue to help us to walk humbly before you, to understand that we can't take any credit of any good thing that comes out of us because it comes from you. This is how we can maintain to walk humbly before you. But Lord, it's, it's just to know that you are the one fueling the work of faith in us with your power that works so powerfully within us. We say thank you for your kindness, for your mercies, for extending your love to us in so many kind of ways. Your goodness comes through in and so many ways. We need you, Lord. We desire to walk in your goodness, to grow in your goodness, to be rooted in your goodness, in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. We need so much of you because you know that in this world, evil and just the hurt of relationships and actions and people can can be a lot so we ask that you will continue to help our hearts to us anyway to come to you for strength for healing for provision that we may always remain in your goodness reflecting who you are and um, letting the light that shines of your goodness impact everyone wherever we go. Just because we're there, they would ref it would change the atmosphere and they would understand that something is going on or something. Maybe they may not know what it is, but that your goodness would be experienced. Thank you, Lord. We know we have no goodness of our own, but we're so grateful that you have embraced us and pulled us into your goodness, that we could let it shine. So as we walk with you, increase our knowledge and understanding of who you are, that we may continue to exercise your goodness in all that we do. Lord, we bless you. We love you. Even in good times and hard times, we want to understand you more and more. To reflect you in everything. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we want to be counted worthy of your calling. We thank you and bless you for your love and your mercies that follow. Your goodness and mercy that follow us every day. We need it. We say thank you, Lord. May you be glorified. Let your glory shine in our lives. In Yeshua's mighty, most precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining. May the Lord bless you. May he truly bless you. May his face shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you now and always. Amen. Thank you. Have a good evening or good morning wherever you are. Thank you. Yeah.